Um, my dear, my dear Satyabama, can we go to this particular verse in Srimad Bhagavatam 12.351, please? Sure, Mataji, 12.351, I will put it to minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, we'll uh, begin with the invocation prayers. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I offer my humble obeisances to my dear spiritual master, to Srila Prabhupada, to Guru Parampara, to Panchatattva, to Prahlad Narsingadev, to Jagannath Baladev Subhadramai, to Sri Sri Radha Madhav Ashta Sakis. I offer my humble obeisances to all the assembled Vaishnavas and humbly beg for your merciful blessings that I may be able to carry out the order of my dear Guru Maharaj. Vajja Kalpata Rubyascha, Kripa Sindubya Eva Chapatita Nam Bhavani Pyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namo Namaha. I have uh, chosen this particular verse because it is very important for us to understand the great, or rather try to understand the value of this Maha Mantra that we have been given in this age of Kali as the Yuga Dharma. And this verse goes like this. Kalar dosha nidhera jan asti hi eko mahan gunaha kirtana deva krishnasya mukta sangha param raje. And the translation and purport by his divine grace, uh, by the servants of his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. My dear king, although Kali Yug is an ocean of faults, there is still one good quality about this age. Simply by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one can become free from material bondage and be promoted to the transcendental kingdom. Purport. After mentioning the innumerable falls of this age of Kali, Shukadev Goswami now mentions its one brilliant aspect. Just as one powerful king can kill innumerable thieves, one brilliant spiritual quality can destroy all the contamination of this age. It is impossible to overestimate the importance of chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, especially in this fallen age. So this verse delineates how just by chanting the holy name, we can simply overcome all the contaminations, all the defects, all the challenges, all the obstacles, all the deficiencies that we are beset with in this age of Kali. This is a very, very difficult age. It is the most degraded age. And all the good qualities are in very short supply, if you have noticed. Everywhere we look around us, there is cheating, corruption, terrorism, even worse, all kinds of things that are going on. And the poor little jiva, the small little living entity is so confused, so bewildered, so beset. If we look around us, we are completely overwhelmed by the forces against us. But there is one redeeming feature, simply by taking shelter of this wonderful process of bhakti yoga, and the principal item or the essence of this process is chanting the holy names of Krishna, we can be completely freed from all the ill effects of Kali Yuga. This is the wonderful, brilliant feature, and it cannot be even understood how much mercy is there simply in this process of chanting Golokera Prema Dhan, Hari Nam Sankirtan, a gift of love from the spiritual world coming down through the mercy of the most magnanimous, most munificent, most merciful, most compassionate, most charitable, most liberal, most kind Lord Chaitanya, who doesn't discriminate, 
who is qualified, who is unqualified, who is deserving, who is unworthy. He simply gives the holy name to everyone without any consideration. How magnanimous is that? Anybody, whether he be a dog eater, an outcast, a murderer, a thief, a prostitute, any low unqualified person can rise to the highest level of perfection simply by chanting the holy names of Krishna and Lord Ram. So we want to take part in this process because we want to make our lives perfect. We want to achieve the goal of the human form of life, which is make, becoming self-realized and becoming situated in our real position, which is being what? Loving servitors of Krishna. That is actually our original position and we have fallen down from that position. And here we are in this material world, struggling in this prison house called the material body and the material mind and the material senses always pulling and pushing at us in so many different ways. But if we simply hold tight to this one thing, chanting the holy names of Krishna, following the process of bhakti yoga, we can be safe from all the ill effects of Kali Yuga. This is the beauty. This is the uh, indescribable mercy of the holy name. And we can, each one of us can fully partake of it without any discrimination. It is open to one and all. Srila Prabhupada said over and over again, we do not discriminate. This is open to everyone, anybody, regardless of race, gender, caste, social uh, position, qualifications, education can come to our temples and take part in the Sankirtan. And the Sankirtan process is so joyful. It is the most joyful uh, way to glorify God because it is the same as the Ras Leela of Krishna with the gopis. The Sankirtan is non-different. So we all want to feel joyful. We want to feel happy. That is the nature of the soul, Anand Mayo Vyasa. But where is that happiness? Everywhere we are trying to find happiness, but we do not find it. It is like a mirage in the desert when we are looking for happiness in the material energy. But it is available. There's an ocean of happiness waiting for us in the spiritual energy. And we begin the process by hearing the glories of the Lord and then chanting his glories in the form of the holy name. Forgive me, I'm a little nervous because I'm speaking in front of Guru Maharaj. So please bear with me. Please give me your blessings to go on. So this Kali Yuga is a very difficult age, as we said. But by chanting the Hare Krishna Mahamantra, one can become free. Srila Prabhupada wants us to take part in this process and partake of its benefits and then give this process to others because this is one of the important duties of each and every one of us who have been given this great, wonderful gift, this matchless gift of Krishna consciousness. How rare it is to be receiving this gift. Brahmanda Brahmite, Kona Bhagyavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Prasadipai, Bhakti Lata Beach. After wandering for millions and millions of lifetimes, a very fortunate soul gets and receives the seed of devotional service from the bona fide spiritual master. How rare is this gift? Just think, we could have passed this lifetime also just like that, like all those other millions of lifetimes without ever knowing who is Krishna, who is Srila Prabhupada, who we are, and there another lifetime gone, like Srila Prabhupada says, so many bubbles in the Atlantic Ocean, gone. <laughs> but we are so fortunate by Prabhupada's mercy we have received this gift of devotional service. So now our endeavor must be to water this Bhakti Lata Bij by Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Sakyam, uh, Dasyam, Atmanivedanam. No, Dasyam, then Sakyam, then Atmanivedanam. So we want to hear and we want to chant. Chanting the glories of the Lord, chanting the holy name and the prescribed number of rounds by Srila Prabhupada, who said this is one of the most important instructions of the spiritual master is to chant the holy names of the Lord 16 rounds every day without fail on the beads and maintain the four regulative principles in order to achieve the perfection of the human form of life. So this one brilliant spiritual quality, as it is said over here in this purport, it is impossible to overestimate 
the importance of chanting Hare Krishna. In fact, Lord Chaitanya, when he was asked, whom do you consider Vaishnav? He said, one who simply takes the name of Krishna, I consider him a Vaishnav. How liberal is the Lord? Simply if we take the name of Krishna, he says, this is my man. I'm going to take care of him from now on. So the Lord is very kind to one who chants and we want to become perfect in our chanting by attentively, lovingly, with focus, with determination, sitting with our beads every morning and chanting the holy names, calling out to the Lord like a child calling out for the mother. Because we are in a very difficult position. If we look at all the difficulties and problems surrounding us and all the problems that are coming at us, you know, hitting us all the time, we will have no difficulty in understanding that we are really calling out for the Lord's mercy like a child calling out for the mother. This is the mood that we are encouraged to adopt in order to achieve that focus, that attention that the holy name deserves because it's non different from Krishna. Once Srila Prabhupada was listening to a lecture by one of the very senior disciples and one of the, the, the senior disciples in that lecture, he said, and Krishna is in his holy name. Srila Prabhupada immediately stopped and he said, where in his holy name is Krishna? <laughs> And the disciple understood that and immediately corrected himself. He said, Krishna is his name. Krishna and his name are non-different because Krishna is absolute. His name is absolute and has all the power of Krishna himself. Oh, my Lord, in the second verse of Shikshashtakam, Lord Chaitanya explains so clearly, oh, my Lord, your holy name alone can render all benedictions to living beings. And thus, you have hundreds and millions of transcendental names such as Krishna and Govinda in which you have invested all your transcendental energies. There are no hard and fast rules for chanting these names. Oh my Lord, out of kindness, you enable us to easily approach you by your holy names, but I'm so unfortunate, I have no attraction for them. This is actually our problem that we do not have attraction for the holy name. We hear so much about the holy name, but we are not so attracted because our tongues are still coated with the disease of material enjoyment. You know, like the jaundiced person, the cure is sugar candy, but it tastes very bitter. But the cure is sugar candy. So as long as the person takes it, he will be cured of the jaundice. So similarly, we have no attraction for the holy name. But if we keep chanting the holy name, it will slowly purify us and we will actually be able to relish our chanting, we will actually be able to relish our, uh, our relationship with Krishna. We'll actually be able to start seeing the name as non-different from Krishna. We will see his form first, and then we will see his form, name, then form, then qualities, then pastimes. And ultimately, Srila Prabhupada said, you will have a spiritual television in your heart. <laughs> you will see the pastimes of the Lord because your heart will be so pure that Krishna would be happy to come and perform his pastimes. Of course, this is a very elevated stage. We can only hear about it and we can try to aspire for it. Right now, we're just having difficulty focusing and just doing our daily rounds for the day. But we must not give up. We must not be discouraged. Whatever little progress we have made, we say, thank you, Krishna. Please help me to get to the next level. Like this, we keep our focus on the process of bhakti yoga, we chant the holy names and we try a level best to move from nama prad to nama bhas to shuddha nam. That is how we want to proceed so that we get the maximum benefit of our chanting and we do not lose out by the faults of inattention or laziness or, or distraction. Um, so I will stop there, Guru Maharaj. Is that sufficient? Brilliant, brilliant. Uh, I can't match that, I'm afraid. I'm just, <laughs> I'm gonna just ask questions based on what you said. <laughs> that was so beautiful. I mean, what else can be said? But since I'm here and I'm supposed to say something, I will. And I just want to, illustrate and and first i want to thank you for choosing that verse 
I was also thinking about talking about the, the glories of the holy name today also. And you actually did it. So, um, I guess as devotees, we're still somewhat insulated and isolated from the horrors of Kali Yuga. Well, many times we do experience things that are quite horrendous in our life. Emotional crisis, a loss of a dear one, a major health catastrophe, a major loss in our pursuits in this material world. Or sometimes we see just an unforeseen accident and, and all of a sudden things are different, changed. But this is just a small, tiny, insignificant fraction of a fraction of the horrors that are swirling around us in Kali Yuga. It is so bad. And when we compare this yuga with the previous yugas and going back to those other yugas, we see how people lived, we see the values they lived by, and we see how they kept those values in their relationships with each other and their relationships with the Supreme Lord. And we see people had good qualities, but see in this age, manda sumanda matiyo manya bhagya padutaha payena apayesa sabda yoga jasmin yuge janas jasmin yuge janas vataha manda sumanda matiyo manya upadutaha. This verse from the first canto of Srimad Bhagavatam very clearly describes the qualities of the people in this age. People have no good qualities. What appears to be a good quality is based on a material consideration only. And if that material consideration moves in different directions, that good quality also moves with it. So basically people adapt some good qualities in order to live but those are always being challenged by the external environment and by other people around them. So, and as Srila Prabhupada used to say, don't stay around, finish up in this life. You don't want to come back in Kali Yuga. It is only going to come worse. And at the end of Kali Yuga, you can see the maximum duration of life will be 20 years of us that if one lives 20 years, that's in the Shastras, that's in the Kali, um, in Kalki Puran. There's a Purana describing the appearance of the Kalki avatar. In that Kalki Puran, 20 years, maybe 25, the maximum will be the duration of life. People will be so small in size, they'll be like, pygmies, and people will be eating each other only in order to get food. This is Kali Yuga. And between where it is now and where, when, in, in where we just described, things will start to gravitate down, down, down. It's just the nature of this age. It's the material world. We can't expect the material world to be a nice place. And Kali Yuga shows us. That's one of the benefits of Kali Yuga. It, it doesn't allow you to get comfortable in this age. It's just a miserable age. In other ages, one can somehow get comfortable and forget about devotional life by the, by the so-called so pristine atmosphere of the material energy. But then again, that will always change. But that was a type of intoxication. But 
but here, going back to the essence of how Sri, Sri Devi described it in such concise and direct uh, presentation, that all I can say is that, and the point that she, the point she made, which is really important to understand, is we have this contamination in our consciousness that we just don't have attraction for chanting. We just don't have attraction. For, if you have attraction for chanting, you'll be chanting all the time. But the holy name is so powerful and at the same time so upliftingly merciful that if we take shelter of the process of chanting, kirtan and japa, not just one, but both, and perform these activities regularly, you'll, you'll be able to experience is the happiness that is described in the Shastras that comes by way of bhakti yoga. This is the process. And that happiness is not just a type of happiness that comes and goes, but it solidifies our self in the consciousness of the living entity in such a way that it protects the living entity from the onslaughts of the material energy at the same time. So Krishna's name is, as Prabhupada would use a very simplified, he said, antiseptic, purifying, prophylactic, protective. It, is, it, it purifies, and it protects. And that purification is what is happening. The soul is coming to the forefront of its experience of itself. And then the happiness that comes by way of that experience is being uh, revealed. So we, what can we say? We can talk about something practical and that is make a vow or make a promise at least to chant not only 16 rounds. But when you ever finish your 16 rounds and whenever you have time throughout the day, don't look for the television or the cell phone or the, the, the person that you haven't talked to in a, a week and you really want to talk to, just pick up your beats and chant. Chant. The, this pandemic is a blessing in many ways because it, is, it forces devotees to have less time outside and more time in a more settled down environment where we can chant. Personally speaking, I increased my rounds simply when this epidemic began. And uh, since then I've been trying to keep it going in, in, in the same vein. So uh, find time to chant more and more and more. Now, our words have no effect unless people actually apply them. When you apply them, you'll see the difference. And what is that application? That means continuous application because as Prabhupada said, if there are offenses, we still can't taste that sweetness of the holy name. It's like jaundice. The, 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 the tongue is coated with some kind of um, some kind of disease, and the sugar cane has no taste, or actually has the same taste as the coating. It's bitter. But don't that that shouldn't be the discouraging factor. Just keep chanting. <laughs> keep chanting and pray to Krishna, as Sri Devi nicely said, as a child calls out for its mother, in the same way that is the mood of chanting. And when we chant in that mood, then the mercy manifests itself more and more. And chanting is nice. And there's one thing you can also experience in the chanting even though you may not be tasting the sweetness of the Lord, is that 
I'm chanting the Hare Krishna Maha Maha Mantra. There's nothing greater I can possibly be doing at this time. If you think in that way, then you're on your way to uh, what we say, tasteful chanting or Nam Ruchi, as Lord Chaitanya said, Nam Ruchi. So we can find satisfaction simply by the process of chanting and not, not so much by, by how much we are getting from that chanting. That will come in due course of time. As Srila Prabhupada said, you know, to, to get a higher taste from chanting is, it doesn't come right away. We have to continue to practice and free ourselves from the offenses, but continue to chant, chant, and chant, chant with, if you're full of offenses, if you're free from all offenses, whatever your situation is, just continue to chant the holy names. And you'll be surprised to see how that holy name acts in so many ways to protect you, to purify you, and to direct you in your day-to-day -day activities and devotional service. The holy name is everything. Enechi asadi maya nasi baralagi harinam mahamantra lao tumi magi. Bhakti Vinod Thakur sings this beautiful prayer. Jeev Jago, Jeev Jago, Oda Chanda Bole, Kota Nidra Jaya Maya, Pisa Chida Kole. And he ends it. Enechi Asadi Maya, Nasi Bharalagi, Harinam Maha Mantra, Lao Tumi Magi. That is the medicine in this age. The disease of this age is bhavaro. Bhavaro means material desires. And, the, and they're becoming more and more profuse. So simply take this medicine of the holy name and chant, taste it, distribute it to others. Let them also taste it. And then you'll understand what Krishna consciousness is. <laughs> You understand it deeply. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if we can uh, receive some questions. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. And devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, please unmute yourself and ask, or you can type it in the chat box and I'll read it for you. Thank you. One of the services that the, that the host does is it summarizes some of the talk and then, and then opens it up for questions. Would you like to summarize, Satyabhama? <laughs> um, so Guru Maharaj, what I have understood from um, Shri Devi Mataji's talk and your talk is uh, chanting Hare Krishna is the uh, a most important and beneficial activity one can do um, uh, from because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very uh, you know merciful, very kind, and he has given this Mahamantra to us all. And uh, Vashi Devi Mataji was saying that uh, once it was asked that who's Vaishnava and whoever takes the name of Krishna is Vaishnava. Uh, so taking the name of Krishna is a very very important and very you know beneficial for uh, in this Kali Yuga basically for all of us. And uh, what you have described um, as in Mahamantra is in what, because I was meditating on my questions, I was thinking as in uh, more of uh, how we can, you know, chant and focus on Krishna's name, basically uh, how we can hear and uh, take the name and uh, uh, benefit from the name basically. And I was, I have the question basically from this that, I've heard that you get the focus on Krishna's name and you get that uh, attachment to the Krishna's name um, in years of chanting, like maybe if you chant for 30, because you were saying that uh, when you have love or attachment to the name, then, you know, Krishna will help, basically. And I've heard that after 20 or 30 years of chanting, you get the attachment to Krishna's name and... Uh, 
You can get attached to Krishna's name in one minute. Or it can take you 100 years and you still won't have it. It's so not, you, you, you can't give it a material definition. That's a material definition. But we should continue to chat and chat and chat. So when you were saying that when, when you're chanting unattentively, uh, then you, you will know that you don't have a test. And, uh, and this is always, you know, um, uh, ever been questioned that uh, how to focus because for some time I've been struggling to, you know, uh, it's just not happening. I, I can see that my mind wonders. The thing is, if try. you're trying to get a taste from chanting, you're approaching the holy name in the wrong way. You're, pro you're asking Krishna to serve you by giving you happiness. That is not the way to approach the holy name. That is asking Krishna to serve you. You should approach the holy name as a means to glorify Krishna, as a means to purify your heart, heart and mind, and not looking for the, the taste will come automatically, and, and you can't make it happen. Yeah, because some like mind gets very agitated when I'm not focused and I'm really, I feel like I'm going to cry because it's just not yeah. happening. Yeah, because yeah, because you're trying to it's just, you're trying to squeeze an orange that has no juice in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's your problem. Instead of getting juice, you're getting tears. <laughs> You're forcing yourself on Krishna by in that mood of chanting. That's not the way to chant. You simply chant the holy names of the Lord. You hear nicely and try through the process of chanting to offer it to Krishna as a devotional act. That's all. Don't try to squeeze out that and what happens when you try to squeeze it out, you go faster and faster. And then what happens, you're thinking by going faster, you know, you're putting more squeeze power on it. But it's not working. <laughs> because Krishna, is, he's a person and he's watching and he's there and he's just thinking, you know, I'll come back when this lady, you know, starts to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so Guru Maharaj when I chant I feel like you know that if, if someone is hungry for you know for days and he hasn't eaten and the way he eats like you know he eats very fast because he just want to you know send something in his stomach and uh, when I chant I feel like you know this is what I'm doing I'm feeling like oh my god I, can't, I just can't focus it I can't focus it I have to focus on it I have to focus on it and I just it doesn't happen because I'm so stressed out <laughs> Stressed out means you're not in you're not in tune with yourself, and how can you be in tune with the holy name if you're stressed out? There should be an eagerness, an enthusiasm for chanting, and, a, and an eagerness in that chanting. But don't expect the holy name to simply respond to your, you know, stressful cries. <laughs> I mean, you can cry for Krishna. That is nice. And that also comes in the form of chanting the holy names of the Lord. But that you can't, you can't artificially put that into place and expect that Krishna is going to see, oh, she's crying for me. No, she's not. She's just crying because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, I'll tell you, I'll tell you a story. This is how this is what your crying is about. There, there was a once a man, he was a he was a cloth merchant. And uh, he uh, his life completely fell apart and he lost everything. And so now he decided to consult with great sages and saints and get advice and direction from them. So he met many, and then he met one, 
and the man was taking him to different holy places, giving him the benefit of being in the holy places. And everybody who was taking him around, there was, you could see from this man, there was no change in the man. Nothing was happening. Finally, this one sage took him to Banaris, Kashi. Bar, 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 what is it called? Varna, Varanasi. And in Varanasi, it's famous for the burning ghats. So he took them to the place where they burned the bodies. And this is on display. People come and you can watch as they take the dead body and they light it on fire. And you can see the whole thing disintegrating right in front of your eyes. So he decided, you know, I got to have to give him some real strong medicine because nothing else is working. So he takes him there. And the man is, and then he says, simply watch the bodies burning. And the man is watching and he's watching and he's watching and he's seeing so much, so much of that is happening. That's a big thing in Varanasi. And then after a little while, the man starts crying. And the sage starts to think, I think we finally got through to him. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, sage said to the man what are you feeling he said oh I can see I simply wasted my whole life as a cloth merchant I could have made more money as a wood salesman <laughs> You get the point? Yes, Guru Maharaj, you got the point. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, thank you so much, Guru Maharaj and Shri Devi Mataji, both of you, because this is something I've been really, you know, I was thinking to write your email about this as well, because um, um, I've been really worried about my chanting and um, I really wanted some solution, but today's class was very useful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Maharaj. When you get to the holy name, slow down. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Chant very methodically, carefully hearing all, oh, and do that for at least 5, 10, 15, 20, half hour. Practice that chanting, and then you'll start reaching a little bit of the uh, attention that is needed to hear the holy name. Practice that. Sure. I will try. Sure. Guru Maharaj. You definitely. just have to go against your very passionate nature. So. <laughs> Sorry, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> no, it's not. A passionate nature is a nature that is authorized, but if it's not directed, it, it will turn into something unpleasant. So... It's good because it gets things gets things done, but it's not so good when it comes to me meditation and prayer. Absolutely, no, it doesn't does not help at all, Guru Maharaj. You're right. Yeah. It's good for you know for many things, but not for uh, it's good for organizing things. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much. Try it. I will definitely try it, Guru Maharaj, and I'll write you back how it works. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is my mission now. <laughs> Thank you. And devotees, I'm sorry for taking so much time. Please go ahead and ask your questions. Hare Krishna Mataji. Can I ask a question? Okay. Yes, 
Uh, Hare Krishna, uh, Tanu Pranam Guru Raj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is like uh, chanting versus listening. So, like, <laughs> Uh, we are not developing the taste for chanting because we have a lot of contamination in the heart. But Gurmash, I see like when I listen from uh, self-realized souls, I mean, I have a lot of taste for this. I mean, uh, but chanting, I don't have the same enthusiasm. But when, um, uh, when it comes to hearing, listening, I have a lot of enthusiasm and I see so much um, happiness. Uh, so what is what could be the reason, Guru Maharaj? Could you please explain? It's just conditioning, that's all. Uh -huh. But um, I would suggest, practically speaking, you start listening to Srila Prabhupada's chanting Japa. He's okay. done two different Japa tapes. One is called, uh, one is demonstration japa and the other one is group japa group japa is when he's together with all the devotees and they're chanting demonstration japa he does chants very slowly and clearly for all the everyone to hear if you have that 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 inclination for hearing list regularly hear srila Prabhupada's chanting i was doing that for a long time and i and I would like to again resume that particular brat that I was doing. Just start. And then after you hear from Prabhupada, maybe first, then maybe you can chant after that. It'll be a lot more, it'll be more natural to chant. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Sure, sure. And is it okay, Guru Maharaj, if I play uh, the uh, Japa recording and chant along with Srila Prabhupada's uh, things? Usually, sometimes I do that when I don't uh, really have that motivation to chant. I usually play Prabhupada uh, chanting uh, videos and I try to chant along with uh, that. that so. be, that's controversial. And there's different devotees okay. who have different opinions on it. And okay. I'll explain the controversy. Mm -hmm. The controversy is that some people say we don't listen to our own job, but then we just listen to Prabhupada. And therefore, that takes away from our chanting. And others say it helps us to practice japa better. So um, I won't give you the conclusion that the GBC has come up with because I don't think it's important. Mm -hmm. right now but my my suggestion is do that but make sure you're listening you're hearing your own japa along with hearing Prabhupada's japa okay, okay. The way to do that is not to play Prabhupada's japa loudly okay very much. Yeah, yeah. keep it at a very soft tone okay. and then hear Yes, Guru Marshall, definitely. Are you feeling sick? Uh, no, 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 just allergies. I have some allergies. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, some grass allergies, so whenever, so, yeah. I'm yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah. I hope you have some remedies. Huh? Uh, yes, Guru Marshall. Yeah, thank you. But chanting is a remedy for everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, Guru Marshall. Definitely. Yeah. Thank you and happy to see you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ah, sorry, I have one more question if it's okay. Can I ask? Uh, Guru Maharaj, you mentioned in this age, people have no good qualifications, right? So this age will not allow us to live comfortably. Sometimes when I keep hearing that, it uh, gives me some, you know, it demotivates me, you know, okay. I don't feel enthusiasm to do some material activities also. So how should we, uh, because we have to keep go in this material activities also. That doesn't apply to Krishna consciousness. In other words, in previous ages, if somehow people could be situated in a mode of goodness, there was a type of material happiness and prosperity that people would accept and go on in life. But that's not there in this age. The mode of goodness is just not here. This age has obliterated that mode. 
So, but Krishna consciousness is Sudha Sattva, not just Sattva, but Sudha Sattva. In this age, as Prabhupada said, the only alternative is Krishna consciousness. There's no other alternative. Okay. So just uh, engage in the devotional service. But, yeah. And develop those qualities that, that come by way of, of the practice of Krishna consciousness. Yes, and, and especially chanting. Yeah. If, if you become attached to chanting, then you'll see everything is going to, it will become so clear that everything is in the right. Oh. It, it will be, become so clear. Okay. Develop a taste for chanting. Mm -hmm. So then hearing Guru Maharaj, let's uh, just like say, like if I have to listen like two lectures a day, so spend more time on chanting than hearing or like how I should balance it out. Uh, That's up to you. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, happy. Thank you. Gurmara Satyabhama Mataji um, has some important meetings, so she can't uh, host now. Uh, I just took over. So, okay. Do we have any more questions? Yes. And um, devotees, any more questions or comments? I think there are no more questions, Gurmara. Okay. We'll stop here. We want to thank Sri Devi for opening up the discussion in such a powerful and wonderful way. And thank the, all the devotees who came online to hear today. And uh, please understand that this is the most important subject. Uh, it's not that everything else is unimportant. It's just that this is the most important. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, uh, for a very wonderful class. And thank you, Sri Devi Mataji, for a very nice class. Um, so thank you so much. Thank you for your time, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Guru Maharaj, Guru Maharaj, Thank you.